businesses left, right, and above are going touchless amid the coronavirus, right? You don't want to get the germs. Well, Geely Automotive, this is in China, is taking to delivering keys to customers' brand new cars they've bought from Geely, taking them and delivering the keys via drone as part of a contactless handoff of its autos to these customers. But take a look at Dragonfly. This is a drone company that says its aircraft can actually detect coughs and sneezes in crowds, even fevers, and heart and respiratory rates. Westport, Connecticut police were all ready to unveil it, but then had to scrap it before they even tried it out because of a concern from privacy advocates. Yeah, they did not like that at all. So we thought, let's, let's get this company in here. We want to hear about this. Dragonfly CEO Cameron Chell joins us live now from California. Um, Cameron, first of all, your drones, as I understand it, were originally developed for rescue missions and things like that. Tell us how they work right now and how you anticipate they would work in detecting coughs and sneezes. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks for having me today. Dragonfly, uh, we're a public company, DFLYF is our symbol, and we're the oldest operating commercial drone manufacturer in the world. Uh, we have a history of public safety, and in fact, Dragonfly had the first drone that was credited with saving a human life using a thermal camera in a search and rescue operation. And today, that drone sits in the Smithsonian. So we, we have a history of working in, in public service, public safety, and search and rescue. This technology was originally developed by the University of South Australia uh, with backing from the, uh, the Department of Defense there to be able to put cameras on helicopters and fly over disaster relief zones to assess the vital signs of survivors and to be able to give efficient triage, put boots on the ground, understand how to resource property and save lives. And that's what this technology uh, is used for. In fact, the, the technology then migrated to being able to be used for uh, doing the vital sign uh, detection in migrating herds or uh, populations of animals that may be in danger because of wildfires or drought. And so uh, the University of South Australia, yeah, I mean, it's amazing, amazing technology all built for the right reason. Um, the University of South Australia bought their first drone from Dragonfly in 1999. So we've got a long relationship with them and, and a trusted relationship. So as, as what we were looking to do is to take this incredible technology and apply it to the pandemic scenario where we could get population measurement and determine if the curve is flattening and determine if there's an opportunity to reopen the economy. Listen, uh, great intentions for sure. Before I get to the privacy issue, our show, The Claiming Countdown, as a, actually airs in Australia. So good on the University of South Australia. But yeah, um, I, I want to know, you got approval from the FAA to, to fly over people? I mean, isn't there that 107.39 flights over waiver? Did you have to get a waiver to be able to do this and try it out? Oh yeah, for sure. Everything that uh, that's done has to fit within all the um, the appropriate regulations, and so any flights adhere to you know the FA uh, 107 and uh, and anything else that needs to be done by the appropriate yeah. pilots. Okay, now I want to ask you about the controversy. The police in Westport sure. were ready to put this out there, put it over the town, uh, and then it was grounded before it even happened. We understand their worries that, that suddenly you'd be pinpointed because you have a fever. Maybe it has nothing to do with the coronavirus. Um, you know, can you assure people in other cities that are actually interested in using your technology that it would be very private and that it's just, I guess, metadata? Yeah, I think it's important to understand that the technology can't profile somebody. It can't identify somebody. What it does is it provides a population uh, sample. Uh, for example, you can take it down, you can fly it over a beach, and uh, there might be 44 people there. You can measure all the social distancing, the percentage and time that social distancing has been happening. Uh, if masks have been worn, if they haven't been worn, it does not do and frankly can't do facial recognition. It can uh, measure heart rate, respiratory rate, uh, O2 saturation. Uh, some body temperatures, and all of that information combined then provides a picture of population health. Uh, the video uh, feed on the health data does not go back to, uh, first of all, that doesn't recognize people. It's not tied to a database uh, that would. Uh, that, But the data goes back to our officials now who can now start to piece together information based on real-world data to say, hey, we're, you know, our, pop, our, our social distancing is working, and uh, there's only 0.2%, there's only a likelihood of 0.2% infections at this time right now. 
But next weekend, as you might be flying, or you or you, you might notice a spike of three percent, and but you also might be noticing that social distancing or mask wearing or whatever the case is is dropping. So now you can implement some public awareness campaigns or take some proactive action. The real challenge okay. I think that the public officials today it. have is is that they don't have data to make decisions with. I understand. I understand. We got to run, but next city that you're going to try and roll this out in. Yeah, we, we, there's there's dozens of pilots that are that are in the works right now, and and we had the unfortunate scenario in Westport, but it is it's actually spurned interest throughout the rest of the country. Um, we'd like to follow this story, Cameron. You let us do that. I appreciate it because I think oh. Dragonfly is definitely something that's going to be in the news. Cameron Chell of Dragonfly, in interesting stuff, guys.